This segment of the Avaya Podcast Network is sponsored by Cashfly. Deliver content fast with Cashfly. Visit C A C H E F L Y dot com to learn more. This is the Avaya Podcast Network. A P N. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. You're listening to the Avaya Podcast Network. Now, here's your host, Mark Fletcher, Business Development Manager for Public Safety Solutions at Avaya. Nobody likes to wait for anything, especially for a 911 call taker during an emergency. And the average call answer times have been under scrutiny lately in many areas. But before you throw the baby out with the bathwater and criticize efficiency, you need to make sure that you've got valid data that you're working with. Before you measure something, you need to define where you're going to start measuring. For example, if you're going to run a foot race, whether it's 50 yards or 5 kilometers, there's a distinctive starting point and a finishing point to that race. The clock starts when you cross the start line and stops when you cross the finish. Sounds logical, right? Well, looking at statistics for emergency calls is really no different, as long as you understand where the clock started and why. Now, while discussing some average answer times with a colleague this past week, a point came out in the conversation that created a significant amount of confusion around this very topic. So we're going to play Mr. Wizard a little bit and show you exactly what the information is. Now, in an emergency, seconds matter. And as it turns out, some emergency dispatchers were actually being penalized by not meeting a state-mandated answer time. There were instances of other agencies that were being accused of fudging the numbers in an effort to make their statistics fall within acceptable guidelines. But while looking at that data, it became very apparent that potentially no one was paying attention to where the clock started, only when it ended. So imagine yourself running a five-minute mile and to find out later that your time was actually 10 minutes because the clock started while you were still tying your shoes. Not really too fair, right? Well, the same thing goes for 911. The anatomy of a 911 call. Now, unless you've listened to the trunk side of a 911 call, you might be slightly astonished at the archaic analog nature of getting a call from point A to point B. About two years ago, I was fortunate enough to receive an audio clip from a 911 call that I quite often use for training purposes, as it highlights several points that otherwise aren't very obvious. Getting ready to get ready. 911 camera trunks that connect the PSAP to the 911 Tandem Central Office are specialized analog circuits that are similar to Centrex lines. One difference is when a call is presented to them from the 911 network, the signaling mechanism is not ringing voltage, as found on a normal telephone line. The central office will actually wink towards the PSAP, which is applying some reverse battery on the circuit. Basically, it's an electrical signal change. The CPE, or PBX, will then wink back towards the central office, confirming its readiness to accept a call. CO then winks back to the PBX, confirming that the response was received and that digits are going to be coming down the line. Now, when you look at all this flirting going on between the two systems, these winks are clearly noticeable by sharp spikes in the audio, and they can even be heard out loud on the line as large clicks. Now, in this example, you can clearly hear those. And if you look at the written version of my blog at avaya.com forward slash Fletcher, you can see the three winks at the very beginning of the call. Now, if you're measuring answer time from the central office side, this would be a likely spot to start counting from zero. At this point, everybody's shaking hands and the audio path is now open between the central office and the 911 PSAP call taking equipment. The central office then signals to the CPE in-band information using multi-frequency tones for digits and some specialized signaling characters to indicate the ante of the inbound 911 call. This is how the data gets from point A to point B. Now, depending on the area and the carrier, the ante that's received could be 7 digits, 8 digits, or 10 digits in length. Once again, looking at our example, the MF tones are clearly discernible in the audio wave and can be heard. 
Now you'll notice that right after the tones, there's another audio spike, which is the PBX signaling a wink back to the central office that acknowledges the receipt and acceptance of the ANI information. It also serves as a go-ahead signal for the central office to open up the audio channel between the originating caller and the PSAP. It's at this point that the PBX then applies ringing to the line, and you can see an abrupt change in the audio as the caller's audio is now also patched through. In this example, the caller was in the middle of a screen, making it very noticeable. Now here's an interesting side note. What has happened up until this point is fairly critical in processing and delivering the 911 call to the PSAP. I've seen cases in the past where adjunct equipment has been installed on the camera trunks that capture the ANI information and then send it over to the CPE 911 gear for processing. But because their signaling back to the central office was not in proper sequence, they actually returned answer supervision too early and the caller's audio actually corrupted the receipt of the MF tones. In fact, as it turns out, a woman screaming can often mimic an MF tone, causing the system to process garbage data and potentially make the call fail. Just a little side note that's very relevant with the example that I'm showing you. Now, another interesting thing happens at this point, and that is that the CPE equipment now is aware of the call and has the information required to process it. Typically, it generates a call detail reporting, or CDR, start record. Now, once again, another potential starting point for the call. And the problem here is that this starting point is three seconds out of sync with the central office starting point. So again, depending where you're measuring from, someone could be penalized by three seconds. The next step in the sequence would be for the CPE or PBX to process the call and then deliver it to a 911 call taker. Now, after analyzing and listening closely to this sample, it appears that the 911 call taker answered the line immediately after the first ring. Now, remember, a ring cycle is two seconds on, followed by four seconds of silence. Now, we could clearly see the first ring, and we cannot hear or see the second ring. We can assume that the call was picked up almost immediately after the first ring. In fact, you can see a small blip of audio when the line is being connected which is immediately followed by the dispatcher saying, 911, what's the location of your emergency? Now, why is all of this important? Because at this point on the timeline, nine seconds has now passed from when the central office initiated the call, yet depending on where the starting point is, can significantly skew the data and the dispatcher could actually be penalized for a nine second delay when in fact they answered the call within two seconds of it being presented to them. Keeping it fair for everyone. Let's face it, we certainly want to make sure that our nation's public safety operators are doing their job. What we have to be careful of though is to make sure that we're not penalizing them by looking at bad data. That isn't productive to either side. This episode of the 911 Talk Podcast has been brought to you by the Avaya Podcast Network. Executive producer, Danielle Piretti. Producer and Latin American correspondent, Guadalupe Yugini. APN legal correspondent, Martha Beyer. And of course, the APN official voice dude, Spider Harrison. I'm Mark Fletcher, production and creative director. Be sure to check out the APN landing page, avaya.com forward slash APN for our other series and live event coverage. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at avaya underscore APN and with hashtag APN. For the Avaya Podcast Network, this is Fletch. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. You're listening to APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. Find us on the web at avaya.com slash APN.